What are we going to be talking about today? It's savings. Hello friends, my name is Ronke Odewumi and welcome back to my channel where we live the bulletproof life. On here, I share information and tips to help you make the right decisions and choices about your money, your business, your career and your lifestyle. I'm all about living a bulletproof life and by watching my videos, you have taken a step in the right direction. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by pressing the red button on your right. I've done a series of videos about bulletproofing your money and in one of those videos I talked about the three money skills you need to know and have budgeting investment and savings I've also done a video where I specifically broke down how to budget so if you missed those two videos I've put a link in the description to each of them so you can catch up on them so today we are going to be moving on to the second money skill you need to have and that is savings how do you save how much should you be saving? How do you maintain commitment to saving? How do you make sure that what you save stays saved? What do you do with your savings after you've saved it? All of those questions I'm going to be answering today because today we are all about saving and our saving goals and how we're going to achieve them. Stay with me. So a lot of us want to save. Nobody wants to fritter away all their money. At least most people don't. So you want to put away some money, you know, for the future, for the rainy day, to start that business, you know, just to have something in an emergency. But it doesn't always happen. First of all, sometimes you don't even know how much you should be putting away. Sometimes you think you've put away too much because you go back in and still end up spending the savings. Or maybe you're putting away too little because you just want to have money to spend. So how much should you be saving? The rule of thumb for how much you should be saving is 20% of your income. But that doesn't always apply to everyone. It doesn't matter how much the rule of thumb says 20%. Some people just can't do 20%. You need to do a little bit less. And some people can do a lot more than 20%. Lucky people. And the only way or the best way to know how much you should be saving is by budgeting your income. I've shown you how to budget in a separate video. Link in description. But you honestly need to budget your income. You need to know how much you're earning, how much you're spending, or how much you need to spend. That's the only way you know how much you, in your own peculiar situation, can afford to save. So the first thing you need to do in Project Know How to Save is to know how much you, as a person, can afford to save. So now that you know how much you can afford to save, it's time to set your saving goals. You've looked at your income, your coming in and then you've looked at the essential spending how much you need to spend how much you want to enjoy and how much you can save so now it's time to set your saving goals for the month and also for the year how much will you save monthly and then how much will you save at the end of the year setting your saving goals also depends on what you want to do with the savings if you want to save for the future if you want to save for school you want to save for your kids you want to save for a business you want to start how much you need to achieve your financial dreams determines how much you then put into your saving goals. Now, you've set your saving goals, but the question I have for you is, are your saving goals smart? What do I mean by smart? Smart saving goals give you purpose, they give you direction, and they make your saving goals achievable. If you set your saving goals and they are not smart, they're just saving goals. They're just going to be in your mind. They're going to be like a pipe dream. You're going to think about them. You're going to say, well, I want to save 5,000 pounds. I want to save this 50,000 naira. Oh, I'm going to save 1 million. But how? How are you going to do it? It's by setting smart saving goals. Smart saving goals are goals that are specific. So first of all, you're not going to say, I'm, I'm going to save. And that's it. I'm just going to save. No, you have to be specific. How much are you going to save? every month how much are you going to save in a year specific the second characteristic of your smart saving goals is that they have to be achievable so for example if you earn two thousand pounds a month i feel like that figure quite a bit that's not how much i earn if you earn two thousand pounds a month you can't set a saving goals of three thousand pounds a month it's just not achievable you can't say i earn two thousand pounds a month but this year, I want to save £24,000. It's, it's not achievable. There's no magic. There's no trick. There's no prayer. It's not achievable. 
So you need to save achievable goals. Your smart saving goals need to be achievable. The other thing about your smart saving goals is that they need to be realistic. So you earn £2,000 a month or you earn $3,000 a month and then you want to set a goal of, oh, out of my $3,000, I'm going to save 2500 How? You have bills to pay. You have rent. You have mortgage. You have food. You have travel. You have utility bills. You have your phone. You have fuel. Maybe you have kids. Even if you don't have any, you have to eat. So they have to be realistic. If you earn $3,000 Maybe you want to save 700, maybe you want to save 1,000, maybe you want to save 400. Your goals need to be realistic. And most importantly, your smart saving goals need to be time bound. So you have to say, I'm going to save $2,000 this year. I'm going to save it in six months. I'm going to save it in three months. I'm going to save it in a year. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to save $2,000 at some point. I'm, I'm going to save 2,000 pounds somehow, sometime. Because you're never going to. You're not going to. So your saving goals need to be smart. So now you know how much you should be saving. You've set your saving goals. You've checked if they are smart. They are clever. They are smart. The next thing you need to do with your savings is to treat it like a bill. So you work very hard every day, five days a week. Some people even do seven days a week, you know, endlessly. So that you can pay bills. A lot of us work so that we can pay bills. And we pay a lot of bills. We pay them on time. We pay bills. We pay everybody else. We work so hard to pay everybody else. It's time for you to start paying your future self. And the way to pay your future self is to treat your savings like a bill. Because your savings is money for your dreams. is money for financial freedom. So you need to treat your savings like a bill and pay your future self. So if you've set all your other bills to leave your account on the first day of the month or the first week of the month, then your savings also need to leave your account on the same day. Same way. You have to respect your savings. The way you respect your bills, the way you respect your mortgage, the way you respect your rent and you pay them on time, that's exactly the same way you have to respect your savings. It needs to leave your account like your bill. You pay it like a bill. Pay your future self. Your future self deserves it. You work so hard. So if you can't owe everybody else, if you're not owing everybody else, why do you have to owe yourself? So you treat your savings like a bill. And how do you do that? You set a direct debit. You set a direct debit. A lot of us have direct debits for the important bills. You know, they go out. We don't even know. They go out whether we have it or not. They just go. And then we survive on what's left. So your savings also have to go out as a direct debit. And that is why they have to be realistic. They have to be achievable. They have to be smart. Because if you set saving goals that are not smart, when they leave your account, you will suffer. Or they will leave your account and then you have to go back and fetch them from wherever they've gone because it's not easy. Somebody is not surviving. So smart saving goals and direct debit. Treat your savings like a bill. So now you've set your direct debit. Well done you. Your savings are leaving your account just like every other bill. The next thing is, where are they going though? Where are you hiding them? What are you doing with them? I've had people reach out to me to say, Ronke, I'm saving for school. I'm saving for a mortgage. Where can I put my money? Where can I save it away? Where can I put it? You have quite a number of options. And I'm going to talk you through all of those options now. In fact, I'm going to talk you through about six options for your savings. So you have no problem, you know, where you're going to put your savings. We'll find something for them. The first place you can put your savings, because it's usually tax-free up to a certain amount, is something called ISAs. They exist in different forms, cash ISAs, junior ISAs, lifetime ISAs, and there used to be something called help to buy ISAs. So the cash ISA is a savings account, really, that has a good interest rate a lot of times, and you can put money into it up to about £20,000, and the interest doesn't get taxed. So cash ISAs is a good place to start to put your savings in. You can do a direct debit straight into your cash ISA. Junior ISA is for kids and you can't get the money out until the child is 18. So be careful with that one. But it also offers good interest rates. The lifetime ISAs are for people who don't own any property yet. First time buyers. And you can put money in really good interest rates 
and it goes towards your first property. So my first suggestion for where you can put your savings is the ISAs. The second place where you can put your money or your savings is a regular savings account. Different savings accounts offer different interest rates. So you can shop around to get the one that has the best deal for you. I have found that children get better interest rates on savings accounts. So I've opened two in my daughter's names and money goes in for them. And it's savings and it has good interest rate, better than what I would get as an adult. Also, if you're a basic rate taxpayer in the UK, you don't pay tax on the interest on your savings account. So that makes it a good one. So shop around and see if you can get something on a regular savings account. Your third option is called a fixed deposit account or a fixed rate savings account or a certificate of deposit in the US. And these are basically just accounts that allow you to put money in for a long period of time where you can't access that money. And in exchange, you get a really good interest rate. The only downside of that is that there might be penalties if you try to take your money out before the agreed period. But you know, why do you want to do that? We're saving it for the future. We're saving it for something. And so you can afford to fix money for three months, six months, nine months, or a year. The thing with that is that you can usually put money into it in bulk. So you can fritter in 50 pounds, 20 pounds every week. It's something that you have to put money in, you know, in chunks. So you might need to save that money in a regular savings account first before you move it into a fixed deposit account or a fixed rate savings or a certificate of deposit. Um, account. Your fourth option is for those who have property is to overpay your mortgage. This is actually a savings because it reduces the overall interest you are going to pay on that property. So instead of you just holding on to your money, you can overpay your mortgage. Now, before you overpay your mortgage, please have a conversation with your mortgage provider or check your mortgage contract because there's a limit to how much you can overpay before penalties kick in. So overpay your mortgage, put in something every month until you reach that limit and you're really good to go. Option number six is to pay into your pension. A lot of people don't know that you can pay into your pension or you can have a private pension in addition to a state pension, but you can. So you can set up a private pension account and pay into it monthly and your money gets invested and you get really good interest rates depending on the level of risk you're willing to take. So putting money into pension is a great way to put away your savings. Bear in mind that you can't access money you put into your pension until you get a particular age. So I'm careful with putting money into that. If it's money that I need for an emergency or money I think I might need for an emergency, it won't go into my pension account. So this is money that you are saving after you've built an emergency pot. So I would only put money into a pension account after I've put something into my cash ISA or into my regular savings account, money I can access in case of an emergency. Another option is to simply pay off your debt. So this applies if you have high interest debt. If the interest on your debt is so high, it exceeds the interest you are going to get on any savings, then you should pay it off because the interest on your savings is not going to be enough to offset the interest on your debt. So pay down the high interest debt. Let your direct debits from your savings go straight into paying off your debt until you get to a comfortable place where the interest rate on the debt is no longer pinching you or where you can move it into a low interest debt. I always suggest people move their debts. If the interest rate is too high, try and move it. If you can't pay it down, move it into a low interest vehicle so you're not paying through your nose while trying to pay off that debt. Now, the most interesting or my favorite of all the places you can put your savings is into investment accounts. So this is one that a lot of people are wary of because they don't understand it. But honestly, it's not as hard as you think. And I'll probably do another video about investing your money. I've already done one before about where to invest now. But I can tell you that you can put your money into investment accounts. There are stock ISAs in the UK where you put money in and you end up buying stocks or they buy stocks with your money. You can put money into mutual funds account, money market account, shares, you know, all of that so that your money starts to go to work for you immediately. And this brings us to the end of the video, how to save your money. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, to share with your friends, to drop me comments because I love to connect with you. 
and to tell me how you are going to go about saving and if it's working for you. I'm looking forward to hearing all about your smart saving goals. Until my next video, stay safe and keep living that bulletproof life. Bye.